some 180 million years ago. The supercontinent of Gondwana split. One of the breakaway landmasses from that separation contained what would become Australia and Antarctica. By 30 million years ago, Australia had fully separated and journeyed north on its own. Since then, changes in land formation and climate and the physical separation from the rest of the world led to the unique flora and fauna that we know in Australia today. Thousands of years ago, the inland region of eastern Australia was a far cry from the Sarah place it is today. During the Ice Age, this part of the southern hemisphere hosted its own array of big charismatic creatures, answers to the woolly mammoths and saber-toothed cats up north, some of which roamed then forested regions of Queensland and Victoria. In a country famous today for its curious and sometimes venomous fauna, Australia's prehistoric menagerie has proven just as weird, if not weirder. Australia is so different from the rest of the world because it's geographically isolated. It broke off from the supercontinent Gondwana 99 million years ago and has been doing its own thing ever since. That's why it has so many marsupials compared to everywhere else. It was only in the Pleistocene that placental mammals were able to come over from Southeast Asia as the continent grew closer to Indonesia and then only bats and rats. Most large mammals and birds went extinct at the end of the Ice Age, but Australia was the hardest hit of all these continents, with 90% going extinct. Uniformitarians try to explain these via two different hypotheses. Either they went extinct because of climate change or humans hunted them to extinction. Megafauna included the huge wombat-shaped Diprotodon, the largest marsupial ever known. Like many large living herbivores, Diprotodon was a heavy-built, large-bellied quadruped. Its oversized skull, like those of other Diprotodontids, was lightweight and filled with numerous air spaces. Some scientists believe that Diprotodon may have had a short trunk because of the retracted position of the nasal bones at just under 4 meters or 13.1 feet in length and up to 2,800 kilograms or 6,200 pounds in weight. Diprotodon, although massive, was smaller than either a hippopotamus or rhinoceros to which it is often compared. Paler chests, also known as the marsupial taper, was one of Australia's weirdest marsupials. Named after its long trunk, it was ecologically more like a ground sloth than a taper, having huge claws for shearing vegetation from the trees. Paler chests was similar in size to a horse, being around 2.5 meters or 8.2 feet in length, with quantitative body mass estimates based on humerus and femur bones indicating its body mass could well have exceeded 1,000 kilograms or 2,200 pounds. The niche of large carnivores was also occupied by marsupials. One notable example was the Thylacolio carnifex, which died out 46,000 years ago, reaching the size of a small lion. Thylacolio carnifex, also known as the marsupial lion, is an extinct species of carnivorous marsupial mammal that lived in Australia from the early to the late Pleistocene. Individuals ranged up to around 75 centimeters, or 30 inches high at the shoulder, and about 150 centimeters, or 59 inches from head to tail. Measurements taken from several specimens show they averaged 101 to 130 kilograms, or 223 to 287 pounds in weight. Although individuals as large as 124 to 160 kilograms, or 273 to 353 pounds, might not have been uncommon, and the largest weight was 128 to 164 kilograms, or 282 to 362 pounds. This would make it comparable to female lions and female tigers in general size. The animal was extremely robust with powerful jaws and very strong forelimbs. It possessed retractable claws, a unique trait among marsupials. This would have allowed the claws to remain sharp by protecting them from being worn down on hard surfaces. The claws were well suited to securing prey and climbing trees. The marsupial lion's limb proportions and muscle mass distribution indicate that, although it was a powerful animal, it was not a particularly fast runner. Paleontologists conjecture that it was an ambush predator, either sneaking up and then leaping upon its prey or dropping down on it from overhanging tree branches. Australia today is famous for a group of flightless birds known as the emus, but they are dwarfed by the region's previous flightless birds. 
Dromor Nithidae, known as Mirungs, and informally as Thunderbirds or Demon Ducks, were a clade of large, flightless Australian birds of the Oligocene through Pleistocene epochs. One species, Dromornis Dertoni, was 3 meters or 9 feet 10 inches tall. It is also not clear to what degree Dromornithids were carnivores. The massive, crushing beaks of some species suggest that at least some members of the family were either a combination of carnivorous predators and scavengers or omnivores. Other features, such as the hoof-like feet, stomach structure, and eye structure that resulted in a wide field of vision, but also likely created a central blind spot of about 40 degrees, suggest a more herbivorous, migratory lifestyle. The current consensus is that they were, indeed, herbivores. Moving on to reptiles, the continent was home to Megalania, or Varanus priscus, which is an extinct species of giant monitor lizard. It is the largest terrestrial lizard known to have existed, reaching an estimated length of 3.5 to 7 meters, or 11.5 to 23 feet, and weighing between 97 and 1,940 kilograms, or 214 to 4,277 pounds, but the fragmentary nature of known remains makes estimates highly uncertain. Megalania is thought to have had a similar ecology to the living Komodo dragon. The largest terrestrial lizard to ever walk the planet, Megalania would have likely assumed the apex predator among the megafauna it shared its home with. Its body and limbs were heavily built, and it had a large skull with a jaw full of serrated blade-like teeth. Judging from its size, it would have fed on medium to large prey such as the giant marsupials, along with other reptiles and small mammals, as well as birds, their eggs, and chicks. Quincana was one of the last surviving terrestrial crocodiles and disappears from the fossil records as early as 40,000 years ago. This disappearance also coincides with the disappearance of many of the large mammals from Australia and is thought to be a result of the first humans arriving on the continent. Even if Quincana did not come into direct conflict with human hunters, it may have simply been outcompeted by them. Quincana was estimated to be from 3 meters, or 10 feet, to 9 meters, or 30 feet in length, and to weigh around 200 kilograms, or 440 pounds. However, these estimates are based on fragmentary specimens and dimensions of related genera as there have been no complete Quincana specimens found. If there's one thing Australia is famous for, it's snakes. Nowadays, it has many venomous snakes, but a few of its ancient serpents were giants. At 5 to 6 meters long, Wanambi would have been able to tackle any small to medium-sized animal it chose. The aboriginal people living in Australia at the same time as Wanambi were certainly aware of the presence of large snakes and indeed warned their children about going to watering holes alone. Wanambi was a constrictor, which means that it did not use venom but instead wrapped itself around its prey and tightened its grip so that the prey could not breathe in. Another theory, however, is that the pressure of the snake squeezing the chest actually causes cardiac arrest. There is a lot more interesting megafauna from Pleistocene Australia. These are just those which are the most eye-catching. Of course, before the Pleistocene, Australia also had many fascinating inhabitants, from giant bipedal stegosaurs to mega pythons. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time!